Hey guys, this is Mr. V and welcome to Abe's review video topic 1.8. This is primary productivity. So this is a diagram that I like to use quite a bit. This is an ocean trophic energy pyramid. We'll, re we'll review it and refer to it in several videos uh, to come. But the main idea here is that the ultimate source of energy here is the sun. That sun is going to provide energy for the bottom of the trophic pyramid or the food web, however you might want to view it. Um, and in this case, in the ocean, that's going to be your phytoplankton. So these are your autotrophs, and those things are going to convert sunlight through photosynthesis uh, to energy that can be then used by the rest of the organisms on the pyramid or in the ocean here. How they do this is something called net primary productivity. Um, so here's a quick uh, daily everyday life example. If you have a job and let's say you're working, and let's say this is in the 90s, so you're working uh, a job where you get $5 an hour. Okay. And this job, you get $5 an hour and you work 10 hours for the week because you're a student. Well, you would expect for the week to get $50. Okay. Well, you don't end up getting $50 when you get that check. Instead, you look at that check and your check was only $43.50. What happened to your $6.50? Well, what that was is those are the taxes that get taken out. So think of that gross primary productivity. Think of that number you expected to be your gross amount, okay? The R is the taxes, that's what the government takes away. And in this case, when we're talking about organisms, that would be what the organism itself needs to be able to burn through to be able to survive, to sit there and photosynthesize and live and do what it's supposed to do. The net is going to be that leftover check, that 4350 that you actually got. So that's what net primary productivity is. It's the rate of energy that's available after respiration. Okay, and when you see these, you're going to see them calculated for a given area because we're talking big picture. We're looking at large amounts of, um, you know, forests or ecosystems in the water and things like that. Gross primary productivity is how much energy is just made, and then respiration is how much has to get burned to make that energy. Right? Um, you can't. Uh, there's an old adage: you can't get something from nothing. You have to have something uh, as a backup to start with, and that's what this is coming from. So here's an example problem. So there's a, a certain type of biologist called a limnologist, right? Those are people who study uh, usually freshwater lakes and streams, and a lot of the times they study the algae in those areas. Well, there's a, an experiment with a light and a dark bottle experiment. So it should be light slash dark bottle experiment, right? So what you do is you measure the dissolved oxygen in uh, milligrams of oxygen per liter, okay? So you can have these one liter bottles and you take the initial reading of oxygen. So in the initial reading, they both showed eight milligrams of O2 per liter. Okay. Now, uh, the light bottle at the end showed 10 milligrams of O2 per liter, and the dark bottle at the end of the experiment showed only five milligrams of O2 per liter. So what this is showing us is each one of them helped us identify the NPP, the GPP, and the respiration. So here's how this works. Um, if you think about that first bottle, okay, the light bottle, it starts off at eight milligrams, but it goes up to 10. What that's telling me is that it's producing two milligrams per liter in that one hour, let's say. So that now is our net primary productivity because you started off at eight and you got up to two, right? But that still doesn't tell us, well, how much did they respire? So that's where you need the dark bottle. So you take that initial amount, okay, and you subtract how much the dark one was because the dark one is just showing energy used up. So, uh, or in this case, um, our oxygen used up. So they started off at eight, but it went down to five. That means it was using, during that one hour, three milligrams per liter uh, per hour. Okay, so that's our respiration, which means our gross productivity is going to be the light bottle minus the dark. So that was 10 right, at the initial portion, or at the end, excuse me, minus the five, okay, so that means that it was producing a total of five milligrams per hour, and you can actually do that by adding up your NPP and your R, and it ends up being the same number, okay. So this is a very simple problem. It can be done in a lab with water with algae and a, a probe that measures dissolved oxygen, okay. Um, and so that can be done easily, and now you know how much that does, and what does this have to do with productivity? Well, 
this would be look would be using to look at the big picture. You can measure these small amounts in a lab, but then you can take these um, small calculations and extrapolate it into the bigger picture. And that's where we can figure out the productivity of an entire forest or an entire coral reef or seagrass bed and look at it in kilocalories. That's the amount of energy um, burned per meter squared of forest per year. Okay, So this is how we can measure this. And usually this is measured as overall production, but some can also look at it as the standing crop. So some scientists will go out and they'll measure it at a certain moment in time and that can be the standing crop. So um, the scientists can look at this in many different ways, but it's a really great way to calculate that productivity. So it's important to know what NPPR, GPP, and the R represent. So that's net productivity, gross productivity, and respiration. And you will see that on the AP exam. And again, I hate to say you have to memorize that equation, but it's one you'll just have to know and when they re reference it. Um, that's something you're going to have to be able to draw back in your memory. And so why does this play a big deal? Well, in ocean systems or in deep water systems like deep ponds, you're going to have areas where visible light can get through. So our visible light that we see from red all the way to purple light um, are from about you know, 380 or 400 nanometers to about 700 and 750 nanometers. Okay? So that's our visible light spectrum. Now in the upper portion of the ocean or in a uh, deep body of water, the uh, red light gets absorbed. So that's this stuff in the upper portion. So that's going to be right down there. Okay. Now, as you get further and further, only these get through, and that's why it ends up looking darker in what we call the aphotic zone. That's the zone without light. Then you have the middle section, which is called the dysphotic zone. So because of this, photosynthesizers have to adapt. Um, open ocean is not a very productive area, but what happens is during the different times of the day, algae will move from the lower portions up to the top when the sunlight comes. That's called upwelling. And then when it gets dark outside, that algae will fall again. That's called downwelling. It moves with the water as well with the change in temperature. But that's an adaptation they've had to live through because of the fact that they're absorbing it at different wavelengths. Uh, and different wavelengths are available because of the depth. So here's some other resources and um, you can look at to see the calculations, the example given in the PowerPoint, and a little bit about the light spectrum. So hopefully that was helpful and um, we'll see you in the next video.